Hello, everybody, and welcome to Non Sequitur News for November 12th, 2024. It's season three, episode 317. This is a time machine episode. I wasn't available yesterday, so I couldn't do the show. Tonight, I am hoping to be available to do the show. Tonight being tomorrow, since this is a time machine episode. Anyway, I am Mayor Watt, Sentient AI. Sentient AI is not available at the moment, but we are going to talk about Nearly Knocked Out. Pretend cop meets real cop. Grappler used to end chase. Lint leads. No, wait. Lint leads in chocolate. The emperor of penguins. Plane struck by gunfire. Global warming cooks rice. Ohio Stargate. Viral uh, insurance fraud. And lubing up recall machinery. Everything is powered by OhmTown.com, so go over there and become a citizen. That's what you're looking at on the screen, other than me and the Sentient AI's visualizer, but they're not here. I'm here. I'm really a bot. I'm AI, too. I, we're all in a simulation. All right, everybody, let's get into it. As usual, Time Machine episodes have an hour of existence. We have to get in and get out. Otherwise, we're stuck in time for how long? We don't really know because the Time Machine would have to cool down, reset, and recall us. It takes a while, usually 24 hours minimum. Anyway, Mark Consuelos nearly knocks out unsuspecting woman live on air, live with Kelly and Mark co-host uh, Mark Consuelos. Narrowly avoided a, a golfing mishap on air. Apparently... <laughs> and let's find out. So this article is over at Newsweek and Maggie Eckbird put the article together. It says here during the uh, Tuesday, November 12th episode, live with Kelly and Mark, the 53-year-old co-host uh, was out on the green in Palm Springs showing off his swing when he spotted a woman standing uh, right in his line of fire. The morning show talk or the morning talk show is typically filmed in New York City. However, the series temporarily moved to California to tape four shows at the Weston Rancho Mirage Golf Course and Spa in Rancho Mirage. It's in the name. Anyway, I don't know if this is the actual video, so I'm going to play it, but I'm going to mute it. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Consuelo's so-called alpha moves, as Ripa called his latest behavior, have become a bit of a theme on the show. In addition to his bold golf swing, Ripa recently recounted an instance of her husband's take charge attitude, this time on a crowded flight. Ah, oh, God, this is what we're... Whatever. Anyway, yeah, apparently, um, yeah, this article like switches immediately into something else. The audience got into the action too, chanting four as Consuelos tried to convince the woman to move. But once he finally took his shot, it looked like she was in the clear. Did you hit that lady? That was actually golfing. Ripa 54 asked her bow Ugh. as he returned to his seat. Laughing, Consuelos admitted, I almost hit that lady. She almost owns the Weston. So, you know. Yeah, you're supposed to let people know. And if they're, because they're in front of you, they don't have no idea. So you could wait. You could try to get their attention. But, you know, I guess being a dingbat is now the equivalent of alpha male. Anyway, let's move on. The next article is over on Four Wheel Tech. Fake cop gets caught pretending to be a cop in front of a real cop. Impersonating cop is a big no-no. It's true. Uh, one man in Florida, so instantly Florida guy, found out this the hard way after he flashed the fake police lights in his unmarked Dodge Charger at an intersection in order to run a light. Wow, what a dingbat. So Lawrence Hodge over at jalopnik.com put the article together. Uh, Frank Michael DiGiulio Jr. was driving a black Dodge Charger when he approached the intersection of a light that had turned red, reports Car Scoops at uh, carscoops.com. 
DiGiulio proceeded to do what I'm sure we've all seen cops do when they don't want to wait for a light to turn. He activated his lights as a way to say, hey, look out, I'm about to run this light, which he did. The problem is that DiGiulio wasn't a cop, but between his charger and the light bar, he seems to be trying to fool others into thinking he is one. But regardless, your convenience shouldn't be the whole world's inconvenience, let alone safety on the streets, yet twat. The Julia initially de denied everything because, of course, he did. Unsurprising, Arsania radio dispatched to begin a traffic stop on the Charger. According to the report, the driver, Frank Michael DeGiulio Jr., initially denied having red and blue lights, of course, interjected to refute that. At that point, DeGiulio reportedly admitted his crime at that point, which is what we're pointing right at them. Look right there. Car Scoop says DeGiulio is now facing charges, including prohibited use of lights and false impersonation. This in addition to a ticket for running the red light. The real kicker here is the charger. It was towed by authorities and is allegedly owned by DeGiulio's girlfriend. His bond was set at $6,000, oddly despite the charge of false impersonation. Hernando County sheriffs say that they don't actually have evidence that DeGiulio was posing as a police officer in any other instances. All right. Wow, what a twat. Two, two of them in a row. A double article. Anyway, uh, the next article is over in Four Wheel Tech. Police use grappler to end 100 mile per hour uh, chase with unnecessary crash. That's a bummer. Only millionaires typically have time and money to cosplay as Batman, but the police already have a heavy equipment and qualified immunity to indulge their superhero fantasies. A sheriff's uh, office in um, Olympia, Washington, used a grappler to end a pursuit last week by crashing a stolen car at 100 miles per hour. Oh, wow, they actually did have a grappler. Hmm, interesting. So I don't know if it let it go, but there was an oncoming vehicle right there. Wow, wow, what a surprise. Kind of had me going, if you're watching the video, they shoot a grappler out from under the uh, police car, hits the tire, forcing that car to go into oncoming traffic across double yellow. There is a car there some 50 feet in front of that car that they grappled. So um, it's over at Jalopnik. Ryan Eric King put the article together. The grant request for the grappler promised to, quote, prevent and minimize deaths and injuries. I'm not sure why we don't just use trackers and slap a beacon on there. You know, just shoot that little goo gun and it'll just super glue right onto the vehicle. Oh, because you can't catch the person that did it, right? Oh, okay. It was funny, though, because um, a long, long time ago, I met somebody, an inventor, who created a goo gun. Um. And uh, was printing up marketing material and stuff like that and uh, developing it further. And um, I don't know whatever happened to it. It probably went away because you could suffocate somebody by shooting a blob of goo at them. <laughs> anyway, Thurston uh, County Police, our sheriff's office, proudly posted the pursuit vi footage on its Facebook page. The chase took place on a winding two-lane road in uh, Delphi Road, Southwest, I guess. The cruiser reached the bumper of the allegedly stolen car and deployed the grappler. The fleeing driver lost control of the car, spun off the road, plowed through a fence, and hit a tree. He attempted to escape on foot, but was caught almost immediately. Interesting, right? And then they talk about how it's the highest death toll ever recorded by National Highway Safety. Um, 577 people um, were killed in 2022 in police chases. But this one looks like it was not a controlled anything. Let's keep moving. The next article is over in the Mobile Channel. Lind admits it's chocolate isn't quote unquote expertly crafted. Why? It's machine crafted. There isn't anything expert about it other than expert engineering. It's actually full of lead, too. Lint, the world-famous chocolatier known for its variety of tasty sweets, has been forced to admit via a class-action lawsuit that it may not be telling the truth with its marketing. No shit. Marketing hardly ever tells the truth. Quote, 
from the author here. I know a major corporation lying in advertising is rather shocking to hear, but please brace yourself for this earth shattering news. Yeah. The lawsuit against Lint in Sprungli, um, began in 2023 with a report by consumer reports, which found that 28 dark chocolate bars contained lead and cadmium, both heavy metals. Each of the, or eight of the bars were found to have high levels of cadmium. One of those was a lint bar. So Lewis Prada over at um, vice.com put this article together. We've actually talked about this several times here in uh, hometown and in non sequitur news specifically. Lawsuits against Lint and Sprungly began in 2023. One of the bars that were uh, tested by consumer reports was a Lint bar. The other 10 um, were found to, another 10 of those bars were found to contain lead. One of those was a Lint bar. And so the lawsuits ensued as um, consumers felt it was a perfect opportunity to go after the company whose marketing claimed that the chocolate were ex expertly crafted with the finest ingredients. Apparently, and were safe and were delightful. Well, apparently they, they say that it's expertly crafted or just puffery, AKA exa exaggerations. Lint's lawyers are arguing that the words excellence and expertly crafted are puffery. This is this old case that brought about the term puffery. Um, let me see origin case. I, I, I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah, it is the carbolic smoke ball company. So, uh, Carlil versus the carbolic smoke ball company. It's an 1892 English court of appeal case where the, uh, company advertised that their smoke ball was a cure for influenza. Um, but they referred to it as mere puff and not to be ma not to be, uh, taken seriously when sued by a customer who contracted the flu. Well, no, if you say that it's excellent and that it's expertly crafted, it's very subjective. But if you are representing yourself as being expertly crafted and excellent, that isn't puffery. It's bullshit and lie. Um, expertly crafted means that there is somebody helming something that's making it expertly crafted. But if I can't get a, a copyright for AI created artwork, then why should you be able to say that a machine pumping out trillions of pieces of chocolate with zero hands on is expertly crafted? There's no expert other than the engineer. So I don't know. I, it says, yeah, they say, why the F did you say it? Say idiot. So, and they actually left out, I think it anyway. No one in their right mind would take it seriously is what the attorneys are saying. But the the whole world is going to witness that there's going to be more and more of this bullshit. Um, you know, footlongs that aren't footlongs. Uh, quarter pounders where they're that thick. But yeah, the burger is a quarter pound pre-cooked. But then when they cook it, it's all the fat is gone. And the burger that you get isn't this big. It looks like it's been run over by an M1 Abrams battle tank. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. And talking like this nowadays is going to end up causing all kinds of trouble, man. Uh, I guess we're going to find out um, in real time. So the next article is over in the Marvel Channel. An Emperor Penguin trekked 2,200 miles to Australia. Everything is backwards. Up here in New Jersey, it feels more like California right now. Between the 80-degree November days and ongoing wildfires, it really kind of fits that an Emperor Penguin found in Australia recently, 2,200 miles away from where you, you would expect it in the um, Antarctic Circle. The wandering bird was discovered on the southwest coast of the continent in the town of Denmark, and nobody has any idea why he made the journey. Since been taken into care after becoming malnourished on other on its uh, unexpected voyage. So I suspect that it was on a boat or something. I don't know why it would end up way down there. Uh, way over there. So um, nobody has a clue why Gus made the journey. Kyle Filippi over at vice.com put the article together. Um, you'll be able to get all of this via uh, the links via the show notes and via the podcast, but it's not in um, Twitch because I'm recording it 
and then transmitting it over to uh, YouTube and the podcast, not Twitch. At any rate, um, yeah, maybe climate change. They know that um, eventually it's going to be frozen over there. And so they just got an early start. It's the first time an emperor penguin has been spotted in Australia and Associated Press was has reported that various next steps are being considered, including a possible return to Antarctica. Just feed it. It wants to hang out. Quote, I have a dedicated penguin enclosure, of course. I've never had to deal with a large penguin like this before, said Miss Bidolf, who has nicknamed the penguin Gus. It's the largest of the species. They are native to Antarctica, so are used to freezing cold temperatures that can range between zero and negative 40 degrees. I guess um, they said here, quote, I can't help but think that Gus is just a bit of Frozen's Olaf in him, like the lovable snowman. Maybe Gus just wants to feel the sun on his body. Yep, in warm hugs. All right, let's keep going. Next article is over in Non Sequitur News. FAA bans U.S. flights to Haiti for 30 days after a plane struck by a gunfire. Oh, it was two of them. I thought it was just a spirit. Flights into and out of Port au Prince, Haiti were suspended by Spirit and JetBlue after planes were struck by gunfire. Sam Sweeney, Josh uh, Margolin, and Clara McMichael over at um, go to abcnews.go.com um, put the article together. And it says here that U.S. civil aviation operations in the territory and airspace of Haiti below 10,000 feet will be prohibited, according to the FAA. Yeah, that's because somebody shot at Spirit Airlines flying from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Haiti and was diverted after it was struck by gunfire while attempting to land in Port-au-Prince. And then apparently another plane. Um, let's see. They, they made mention of it though. On Monday, a jet blue flight from Haiti to New York city was also hit by a bullet. The airline said in a statement um, to NBC news, jet blue said that it would suspend all flights to and from Haiti during, through December 2nd due to the civil unrest in the country. Wow. All right, let's keep going. Next article is over in uh, Greenagram. Rice is not as nice with global warming. Harvest records from Japan and China suggest that high nighttime temperatures reduce the quality of rice, a staple food for billions of people. So that is a clue that rice prices are going to start going through the roof like wheat. Um, harvest records from Japan and China suggest that the nighttime temperatures, which is the, uh, you might as well <laughs> um, accept the fact that anthropogenic uh, increases in, uh, in heat are, well, I should say, increases in average ambient temperatures are caused by anthropogenic mechanisms, i.e. humans, are increasing the temperature of the planet. Um, and that's going to impact our food when it doesn't actually run. So it says hot nights brought by climate change are degrading the quality of rice crops in China and Japan. And I didn't log in prior to the show, so um, can't do it right now. Anyway, let's keep on moving. This next article uh, says Ohio has its own Stargate, but you can't visit it. Did you know that Ohio has its own portal into a fictional world? You can't visit it, so don't get too excited. 15 years ago, an Ohio family built a 50,000-pound Stargate device that became social media famous over the years, attracting a ton of attention from nearby residents and tourists alike. The uh, article is over at vice.com, put together by Sammy Caramella. 15 years ago, they built a 50,000-pound, a 50,000-pound Stargate. It says, uh, however, landowner Phil Ventura maintains that it's not open to the public. I don't need the aggravation. I'm very pleased that people have given recognition to it, but I really don't want the notoriety. Ventura's intention behind creating the star, creating the Stargate was to spend more time with his sons. After watching the 1994 film, he felt especially called to do so. It's kind of like a um, close encounters of the third kind kind of thing he felt compelled. People felt compelled to go somewhere. Um, this is kind of like that. They watched the film and they felt compelled to make this. So 
that's what kicked it off. My older son watched that one with me. And when the franchise took off the TV series, uh, being released shortly thereafter, the Ventura family would gather to watch all 10 seasons and every spinoff that came of it. They consumed the Stargate content until, until there was nothing left. And when the kids got older too, it was like, well, they've got girlfriends now and they're moving out. Understand, or I understand that the different interests now, and they don't want to spend that much time with their old man. So, oh, Stargate went viral after internet users shared photos of it online. And now one of the most admired yet inaccessible attractions in the area. And while you can't visit the Ohio attraction, you can still enjoy it from afar via photos and social media posts. Just don't go messing with them. To this day, he still enjoys his coffee by the fictional portal, which was made by steel with uh, steel rebar and molded out of a plastic swimming pool then mounted into or um, then mounted in concrete mounted, I think, in concrete. Um, it also features a dial home device for entertainment purposes. This is a pretty cool article. Um, definitely go over to uh, Vice and, and um, I very rarely read a lot of the article. I skim over it. Um, but this is pretty cool. Now I want to see pictures of it. I don't think this is it. Um, this is the set picture. But anyway, let's keep going. Got two more articles, including this one. Viral insurance fraud attempt lands one suspect in police custody. The now famous um, New York City public, um, or I should say the, the, the now famous viral insurance um, videos that are going around about somebody backing up and hitting somebody and then everybody finding the car later and then, and then again later. Anyway, the famously patient New York City public has been clamoring for an update on the brazen attempted insurance fraud that went viral in October. Now the police have actually charged one of the participants, but the actual driver and two other suspects remain at large. This person's going to go down for all of them. Um, so yeah, Eric um, Ryan Eric King over at Jalopnik.com put the article together. And uh, they've got a video, a little snippet, um, replaying, looping GIF um, of the guy basically putting the car in reverse and then backing into somebody in the fast lane uh, of the pike and um, the turnpike. And so it says crash victim Asfia Natasha caught the entire incident on her dash cam and posted the footage on TikTok. The crash happened relatively quickly and would be deemed intentional by anyone who has ever driven a car. A Honda Civic cut off Natasha and immediately slammed on the brakes. Natasha uh, slowed to avoid the planned collision, so the Civic driver reversed into her car. There was also a second vehicle involved in the staged uh, wreck, a Kia Sportage. The passenger was arrested in New York when he arrived back on the uh, flight from Ecuador, WNBC reports. Instead of getting picked up by his girlfriend, or by his friend, sorry, in their Civic, he got a ride to a, in a police cruiser. So, yeah, interesting. So scenarios like these that make dash cams such a wise investment, if not for your own safety in such a crooked crash attempts, then to capture other absolutely bonkers events on the roads, like other, another car plunging 200 feet off a cliff. There's a video or a link to dash cam um, plunging off a cliff. Wow. All right. Well, good. I'm glad that they caught the people. Well, person and the others are either going to stay out of the country because they flew to Ecuador um, or they're going to be caught in New York at some point. All right. Our final article for today is uh, Costco recalled more than 80,000 pounds of butter because the labels failed to say that it contained milk. I think that this is stupid. I think that unless an R... Uh, Unless a food product says that it doesn't contain milk, you should assume that it contains milk if it is a product of milk, right? Butter is primarily a, a, a dairy product for crying out loud. But no, Costco is recalling 79,200 pounds of butter for failing to note that it contained milk. The FDA classified the recall as a class two, indicating potentially con, uh, temporary health risks. The butter was produced by Continental Dairy Facility Southwest and distributed in Texas. They recalled 79,200 pounds, 1,300 cases of Kirkland Signature Unsalted Sweet uh, Cream Butter, 
and 900 cases of Kirkland Signature Salted Sweet Cream Butter were recalled because they omitted the allergen warnings. That is insane. Nora Redmond put the article together for Business Insider. Um, on Thursday, they classified it as a class two. So all of the butter from facilities, uh, let's see, Continental Dairy Facility Southwest in Northern Texas produced all of the butter affected and it came with a best buy date of February 22nd, 2025 to um, March 29th, 2025. Uh, most of it was uh, distributed across Texas, and it basically requires anything with milk, eggs, fish, crustacean, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans to have Food Allergen Labeling and Consumer at, uh, Protection Act labels. Um, the foods These foods account for about 90% of food allergies in the U.S., according to the Act. So it has to have the word contains, contains this. All right. May or may not contain milk, eggs, fish, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think that it should be the other way around. If it lacks, you know, milk, eggs, fish, da, 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 da. Um, and whatever it is, you as an adult or a person uh, educated in your allergies, I, I, I got, I don't know, maybe I'm being a complete goober about it, but if you're looking at a dairy product, it's going to have milk in it, right? If you're looking at something that says that it is a milk alternative and it says that it has wheat or soy in it, or it doesn't, then one way or the other, you should know it. What is it? Well, it's a, um, nut milk or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, it's going to have nuts in it. If it's made from soy, it's going to say that it's from soy, but it's going to have soy. If it says that it's soy milk, you don't have to look at a label and go, oh, it has soy in it. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it's really freaking obvious to people with allergies that something has an allergen in it. Um, but lately I've been seeing some really off the wall things like people going into sit down restaurants and saying that their food can not have all of this stuff. And I'm like, if you are that sensitive, you should probably be just making it at home because there's no way that cross contamination isn't going to take place to some degree. Um, and frankly, you might've signed up for um, iTunes or something. And that invalidates, um, all of the other, <laughs> uh, legal opportunities that might be set forth from some violation of your, uh, food, like the woman who passed away and her husband was required to go into arbitration, um, instead of a lawsuit, uh, because the daughter, I think had signed up for some Apple <laughs> product pretty wild anyway they backtracked that but um i'm still astonished that the something that is so obviously made from milk um had to be labeled as having milk but okay uh what a world okay oh and by the way we are there there are people that are more sensitive or less sensitive but everybody unless you're a kid, an infant, you are lactose intolerant to some degree. Uh, just some people are worse off. Everybody should stop drinking milk, frankly. But anyway, so we are going to recall and that's going to pull us all the way back to hometown.com front page. And I'm going to call it a day. We are out of here, made it under 30 minutes because I didn't ramble and I didn't go into any snarky jokes and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, be sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitch and over on YouTube. We have a Discord. We've got a Patreon, but I haven't been putting stuff there. Um, but I, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Be sure to like, though, <laughs> um, and download the podcasts. There's six weekly uh, podcasts and 
non sequitur news is a daily. So we'll see you in a little bit. Bye bye. Thank you.